Somebody asked me what I felt about what was going on in this country and how things would unfold and whether I'm worried or not. The answer to the question is yes, I am worried. And let me tell you what I believe is happening. There are four major forces in this country today. I'll call them four horns. So rather than four, there are five horns. horns. Two are in the southwest. One is in the east. And the fourth one, the middle belt, fifth one is Buhari, and he represents the north. Now in the southwest, you have two horns, very powerful, aggressive, focused, and very, very committed horns. In the persons of Gani Adams, who is the Area no Kakamfu, and the other is Sandy Igbu, who by any standard is the hero of millions. Exceptionally tough young man. Now, these two forces, they represent the heart, soul, and mind and spirit of the Yoruba people. They cannot be stopped, they're not politicians. They cannot be intimidated, they cannot be threatened. They're extremely focused and both of them, if sufficiently provoked, the kind of mass following they have, uh, their readiness to die for their cause, they're extremely dangerous. Thankfully, they're good men, and men that simply want a fair deal in a wider Nigeria for our people. Also men that are committed to the cause of Ududwa Republic, once it is clear that there can be no fair deal in a wider Nigeria. They're totally committed to that. In fact, they're simply waiting for the integrationists to offer a better deal. Outside of that, they're leaving. And when they decide to go, it will take a war to stop them. And they have the hearts of the people. In the East, you have Namdi Khan. I know him, exceptionally tough, very courageous. And he has a massive following. Absolutely massive. I call him the third horn. I call him the Tiger of the East. Exceptionally tough man and inspirational. And if there is to be an election in the East or in Biafra tomorrow, he would win hands down. He has the hearts, minds, and souls of the people. And he's fighting for his people. Then you go up north. And you go, before I get to the president, you go to the middle belt. There's a man who's a good friend of mine. He was at Oxford. Brilliant man, Obadiah Malafia. Obadiah is not a freedom fighter as such. He's not a man that is committed to any form of violence. Uh, but he's a man of ideas. And his ideas are explosive, extremely inspirational. He's very focused. He's a brilliant intellectual. And his ideas and his intellectual contributions are more powerful than bombs because he has ignited the sense of awareness of the people of the Middle Belt, the Christian minorities, particularly the Northern minorities, particularly the Christians. And he is voicing uh, their opinions and holding their corner and fighting their corner more than anybody else in the history of the Middle Belt, as far as I'm concerned. He's extremely, extremely focused. And he represents, in my view, the fourth horn. And it's a very positive horn, very strong horn, and it represents a hope for the people of the Middle Belt. Then, of course, you have President Buhari himself, who I believe is the fifth horn. So rather than four, there are five horns. President Buhari and those that are with him, that support him, um, are also very focused and committed to doing what they're doing. And um, some of them understand the situation and are ready to adapt, others are not. And, but that group collectively represents a very powerful force that cannot be underestimated. Within that camp, there are various groups. I mean, I won't go into that now. Some are more liberal and more moderate than others. But by and large, these are President Buhari's loyalists and his people. Now, these four or five horns are the ones that hold the destiny of our country. If they conflict, and if there can be no compromise between them, at any point in time, and if we do not agree on a formula to avoid war in this country, if you cannot somehow assuage the feelings and persuade the Igbohus, the Adamses, and those behind them to um, try to be 
a little bit more understanding about what's going on and try to reach out to them in peace and in love and try to build that bridge, it would be a very dangerous situation we're entering into. The same with Namdi Kanu and the same that Obad, the people that Obadiah represents in the Middle Belt. And that's all left to the forces that hold the state, that is Buhari's government and Buhari's people. Now, now what I have said so far um, may have lost most people because it's really not for the uh, less discerning and people that cannot think deeply. It's very profound what I've said, but they say a word is enough for the wise. The dumb may not understand it simply because they're not wise, but the wise will understand what I'm saying. And in a nutshell, what I'm saying is this. Politicians may act and behave as if really nothing is happening and that things are in order and that we're moving towards 2023. And they are totally and completely besotted and obsessed with who will become president tomorrow. Or in the, at least in a couple of years. But what they fail to appreciate is that in two years' time, there may not be a Nigeria left if things go on as they're going now. And I kid you not, I'm very, very close to many, many politicians in this country. I've been involved for many, many years. And I have never seen this level of ethnic nationalism being um, expressed and being exhibited amongst the Yoruba people and amongst the Igbo people and amongst the people of the Middle Belt, as I have today. In fact, it's so extreme that I'm sure it's far more so than even just before the Civil War. And that's what we're dealing with. And people like Ibuhu, particularly, and Adams, uh, and Kanu, and Obadiah Malafia, and even Buhari himself have tapped into uh, the, the, the power and the attraction of that ethnic nationalism. Rightly so, in my view, it can be used in a positive way uh, if it's used properly, if tapped into that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But where these ethnic nationalities are on a collision course, particularly where it's the Fulanis against the rest, or where the rest are saying enough is enough, and where the rest are saying that they are tired and they're fed up, and where the rest are saying that they will not be intimidated or threatened by anybody, even those that organize um, coercive arms of government and that control and control the state, and where the rest are saying that, listen, if you consider us to be slaves, we will show you that we're not slaves. And you have people rising up in those areas, like the names that I've mentioned, like the horns that I've mentioned, to say we will defend the honor and the future of our people and will preserve the lives and property of our people no matter what. This goes beyond politics. This is about national survival. It's about the survival of our ethnic nationalities, and it's about the unity of our country. So I would urge politicians and those that cannot think very deeply to begin to think about what's going on. We're sitting on a keg of gunpowder, and we're acting as if nothing is happening. We've put our heads in the sand like an ostrich, and we're pretending that nothing has gone wrong. In the East today, people are being killed every day, being butchered by our security forces. And of course, unknown gunmen, as they call them, are also attacking not just civilians, but um, members of our armed forces, members of our police, and so on and so forth, which of course I do not support. I think it's wrong. Violence both ways is wrong. And one, um, you know, two rights, uh, two wrongs do not make a right. So what's going on there is unbelievable. In some cases, in some parts, policemen cannot even wear their uniforms now because they are scared of being attacked. And this is very sad. Same in the South-South. In the Southwest, you have massive militias being built up around two charismatic leaders who are prepared to go all the way if sufficiently provoked and if the state cannot guarantee the lives and properties of the Yoruba people. And let me tell you, it is only because the elders of the Southwest have been holding them back and chanting restructuring as a way out. Um, that is why the West has been a little bit restrained. This will not last for much longer. The people there are fired up and they want their own country. And you can't wish it away. The Middle Belters have been completely suppressed, subjugated, oppressed, cheated, and, 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 and belittled for so many, many years now, far more than any other group 
in this country. They are also seeking for emancipation. They also want a way out. And that is ably reflected by the activities and words of a man like Obadiah Malaifa, like I said earlier. And then, of course, you have the core north itself, represented mainly by uh, President Buhari and those that think like him. Um, not all are extreme. Some are, some are not. And thankfully, those that are not so extreme are the ones we can reach out to and talk to. Um, but those that are, you know, have no place in Nigeria anymore, as far as I'm concerned, and really ought to consider going back to Chad, Niger Republic, uh, you know, wherever they come from, uh, and resettle there. Um, but as far as this country is concerned, whether you listen to me or not, whether you believe me or not, and we will have this conversation again in about three years' time, and I'm sure at that time you will say, yet again, FFK was proved right. But for the now, the important thing is to recognize the challenges we're facing, cause these horns to come together and negotiate and discuss the way forward. Because if we don't do that, I assure you, there will be conflict somewhere down the line. The state cannot hold these forces down by armed, you know, by arms. The state cannot suppress the will of the people of the Southwest through arms. They cannot do it. They can't do the same to people of the Southeast. They can't kill everybody in the South. They can't kill everybody in the Middle Belt. And they cannot kill everybody amongst those in the core North that also want to change. What we need to do is to, esta is to establish the fact that it is important for us to sit down and talk as nationalists and see if there's a way out of this and negotiate this thing to a point that everybody is comfortable, whether through restructuring or whatever it is. What we mustn't do is continue to act as if we don't need to talk to each other and act as if nothing will change, nothing will happen, doesn't matter how many people are killed, that the state can hold the line. The state cannot hold the line in a conflict like this. It's only a question of time. It's only a question of time. And the most important thing to recognize also is this. There are men of goodwill on all sides. We may disagree on Odudua, Biafra, Nigeria, or even an amalgamation of the four zones, the Middle Belt, the South, South, the Southeast, and South, uh, Southwest coming together to form one country, and the, 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 the core north going its separate way, or we may have five or six separate countries at the end of it all, or we may believe in an integrated Nigeria, which is restructured, we continue as one. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter where you stand on the way forward. What matters is that we must have peace. We must have dialogue. We must have understanding. And we must stop this idea that you can kill all those that are opposed to you and that you can wipe them off the face of the earth and crush the opposition and crush those that do not agree with you. This cannot work. We must talk. We must dialogue. That's the way forward. That's the only way forward. And that's my preferred option for the future for this country. I continue to trust God that we won't have a war. We won't have a conflict. But I assure you, as sure as I am, that night follows day and that day follows night. If something isn't done, and we don't retrace our steps, and we stop demonizing each other and killing each other, and the killing of the Igbos don't stop in the, doesn't stop in the southeast, the killing of Yorubas doesn't stop in the southwest, the killing of Middle Belters does not stop, being killed by different people, whether Boko Haram, Fulani herdsmen, uh, elements within the security forces, or whatever it is, whoever is responsible, at the end of it all, everybody will say to your tent or Israel, they can kill us, but we also have the right to self-defense, and we will fight back and we'll defend our people. And nobody can take that right away from anybody. So let's have this conversation again in about three years. We'll see who's right and wrong. But I urge you all just to think and to understand the complexity of this situation and the gravity um, of, 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 of this terrible uh, mire that we found ourselves in. I pray for those that make these decisions. I pray for those that are in a position to help us achieve peace. And I call for dialogue and understanding on all sides, but with justice. There must be justice. Without justice, there can be no peace. There must be justice for the people of the Southwest, for the people of the Southeast, for the people of the South, the people of the Middle Belt, and justice for the people of the Core North that have also been deprived by elements within the state and denied their rights. And there must be security. That is the way forward. Talk to Adams. Talk to Ibohu. Talk to Namdi Kanu. Talk to Obadiah Malafia. Talk to everybody. And those on the other side also need to be able to talk to elements within the Buhari government for us to now agree that we go our separate ways peacefully or we stay together in a restructured Nigeria. 
end with this. What we must not do is continue as if we don't have a problem. Because if we continue that way, believe me, 2023 will be an illusion. And even if we get there as one country, I really would pity whoever it is that would take over from President Buhari. We have some good candidates. Those that know me know who I believe is the right person. Uh, I have identified who I think ought to be the president of this country. But the question for me today is that, will there be a Nigeria in 2023? I pray so. I hope so. But at the same time, I will never deny the right of my people in the Southwest for self-determination if that is what they want to do. And I would not expect anybody to deny others the right to have the same uh, principle of self-determination exercised in their zone. That is the way of life. That is what you call freedom and liberty. And that is what we demand. May God bless you all. And thanks for listening to me. Bye for now.